I want to ask you about the best 20 day period maybe in golf history. Yeah. U.S. Open, you beat Nicholas in the yeah. playoff, yeah. Canadian Open, and then the Open Championship. Mm -hmm. Describe those moments. Well, at the time, I, I, I was playing extremely well. Uh, in other words, I, uh, uh, I got on a hot putting streak. All of a sudden, I fell into it, and I started making putts, and I went in to the playoff in 1971 with Nicholas, and I beat him in the playoff. Gave me a tremendous amount of confidence. I went to the Canadian Open. So I went, at, I went there in a the playoff, also with Art Wall. And then I went from there to, to, uh, to the British Open, to, to, uh, went to South Point, and uh, we played Burkdale. And, and I won the Open there. So, uh, yeah, I won, won the three in a row. I mean, it was like the beer tasted the same. It didn't make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> so there's guys at the top of their sports, and then there's guys who transcend the sport. You transcended the sport, SI, Sportsman of the Year, ABC, Wide World of Sports, Sportsman of the Year. And it was not only because of your golf, but because of your personality. Mm. You had an act and everybody ate it up. Can you describe what that was like back then? Well, it doesn't make any difference what kind of personality you have if you can't play. <laughs> <laughs> you helps. understand? You know, that helped. So e e even, even if, uh, if, if I didn't have the personality, I think I would have won those other two awards anyway uh, because of my record. But it's great to be recognized. And, and, and it, there's some self-satisfaction because of the hard work that you put in. You know, everyone's got a talent somewhere along the line. What? Most of the people, probably half the people in the world are doing jobs they don't like. They'd like to be doing something else, but they're afraid to jump. you got to find your niche. you got to do what you think you want to do. And then once you get a chance to do that, then you have to put the time in to be successful. The problem is people don't put the time in. They jump on a job and then they say, oh, I'm not going to like this, instead of really getting in there and figuring out how to do this. But, uh, yeah, it, to tell you the truth, I might sound crazy, but it was easy for me. It, 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 it wasn't hard. It just wasn't hard. It, it, the, the game fell in easy for me. I tried to hit a shot, I'd hit it. I don't know where it came from. I have no clue. And you're not a good sleeper because... Well, I tell people I'm not a good sleeper simply because I can't wait to get up in the morning just to hear what I have to say. I mean, I'm, my, my mouth is going all the time. You know, I drive my wife crazy. Struck by lightning in 1975 at the Western Open, but you made this remarkable comeback. How do you remember that? Funny thing about it is we were playing the week before in Medina, which is just about 15 miles away in the U.S. Open. Two tournaments in two weeks there. And it started lightning, and I'm on the first tee, and they tried to get me to go in the clubhouse, and I wouldn't do it because the gallery was there by themselves. And I said, don't worry about it, I'm going to protect these people. I said, if it starts lightning, I said, I'm going to hold a one iron up because not even God can hit a one iron. <laughs> and then the next week, I got hit by lightning <laughs> on a Friday. I think it was Friday the 13th, and I ended up in intensive care for a couple of days and tore my body up a little bit. But I was back in about six weeks, and I won the Canadian Open in, in 76 mm -hmm. after that. Yeah, a year later, I won. The reason you never went into locker rooms, why? It's too far to walk. You're wasting your steps. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. If you park your car there and the driving range is right there, why the hell do you want to walk in the locker room and put a pair of shoes on? It's crazy. I'm going to put them on in the back of the car and walk right to the range and start hitting balls. There ain't no reason to go in there. And now, Frank, I'll run into you if I'm in there and got to talk to you. So you're wasting my time. I could be hitting balls. <laughs> And describe the competition high in your 92 professional wins. Why was it so intoxicating? When you tee it up, you try to win every time. It doesn't happen every time. I mean, if you really look statistically, we play the only sport that you lose all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if, if you only lose 98% of the time, you've had a hell of a year. <laughs> I never looked at it like think that. Think of that. Yeah. You think of that. You've had a hell of a year. Now, if you lose 98% of the time on anything else, you'll starve to death. Finally, how would you sum up your life in golf? I, it, it's a very difficult thing to sum up simply because I wasn't supposed to play it. There's no way that a little guy that came from where I came from to accomplish what I accomplished in golf 
is not supposed to be done. I don't know what happened. The good Lord gave me a hell of a lot of talent. And that's why I still, I'm at it every day because at 83 years old almost, I'm going to see him pretty soon. And I don't want him to be disappointed. 